friends, this is Peter Herbeck. I hope you're having a fruitful and peaceful Lent, even though things around us continue to shake. Uh, globally, nationally, politics, economy, lots of trouble surfacing in the church, and it's destabilizing and it's discouraging, but it's a really good time for us to be going through and preparing for Holy Week and the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I, uh, there's, as I was thinking about today's YouTube, I thought about the Last Supper discourse of, of John's Gospel, you know, the chapters 14 through 17 in particular, in those areas. And there's so much gold there that we can harvest right now. The Lord wants to speak to us. And of course, God's Word is living and active. And it's a word written for us. It's a living word that the Holy Spirit wants us to be able to internalize, to be able to understand, to have a renewed mind, and to be able to draw strength from. So I just want to say a couple of things that are worth reflecting on. Given the kind of um, division and intimidation, uh, culture change that's happening around us with the cancel culture and the culture getting more and more aggressive against the teaching of the church, dimensions of the teaching of the church and then within the church itself voices rising even in places of authority against fundamental teaching of the church especially against the things that the, the world doesn't like so we're in a moment that's totally in the hands of divine providence and the lord wants to give us all the help resource strength we need and he's allowing this to happen because he wants to purify us he wants us to go deeper and surrender. He wants us to let go of idols and things we're leaning on, security, safety, our, our finances and things that we find identity in. And he, um, he wants us to see those who are followers of Jesus, those in the church, to realize that the only place of strength, the only place of safety, the only place of ultimate joy and peace, the only place of fruitfulness is to be clinging to Jesus to be clinging to God himself and really walking in the faith as we're meant to walk it out. So a couple of thoughts from the Last Supper Discourse of John that would be worth considering as we make our way through the next week and a half. So beginning in John 14, right at the beginning of the chapter, uh, Jesus says to the apostles, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. So don't let your hearts be troubled. It's a good time for us to do a heart check. How am I doing? Is How troubled is my heart? And he'll even say later in the same chapter, he'll say, let not your hearts be troubled and let them, uh, and don't let them be afraid. So Jesus is speaking uh, to us saying, look, I know your hearts are troubled. The apostles are troubled in this moment because they're finding out that Jesus is saying he's going to be leaving them. And also he's going to start talking to them about what's about to unfold that very night. And so there's a lot to be troubled about. Circumstances are not as they thought they would be. That's the same situation we find ourselves in. There's a lot to be troubled about. But what's interesting is Jesus, Jesus knows it. And he tells us essentially, you don't have to live. In fact, I don't want you to live with a troubled heart. You don't have to live with a troubled heart, even though the circumstances are different. And he says, he then says to them, instead of letting your heart be troubled about the circumstances you're living in, believe in God, believe also in me. So faith is a powerful tool and instrument right now in the hands of the Lord and, of, and one that we should wield you know, in our own life to receive the promises of God. I'm with you always. I will never abandon you. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. There's all kinds of things Jesus tells us that he wants us to internalize. But here in this passage, he reminds the apostles. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And then I'm coming again for you. Jesus expects us to internalize that. And if we do, and we really do believe it. That is, we not only hear it and believe it in our mind, but we entrust ourselves to the promise of Jesus, knowing who he is. That faith and that surrender and believing and receiving what he gives to us is going to give us the strength we need to live through the very disturbing, stressful situation we're living through. And, and a situation I've said many times here, friends, on these YouTubes, and I totally believe it, it's it's... The Lord is shaking the nations. The judgment of God is in the nations. His redemptive discipline is in the church to purify the church. And it's going to keep coming. And it's going to get more and more intense. But so is his grace. 
And if we lean into it and we're wise, we lay hold of it, we're going to be able to find ourselves walking in greater freedom. Now, part of the reason the stress is rising and people's hearts are troubled is because of what Jesus describes in John 17, the beautiful, powerful prayer where the longest kind of encounter in what we we see and hear Jesus praying to the Father in the intimate concerns of his heart. What, what is he concerned about? He's praying for the apostles. And not only the apostles, but those who hear the word of the apostles and follow it. This, here's a couple key things we can chew on. As Jesus is praying, he's, he acknowledges, first of all, that the Father has given to him the apostles. And it's the Father who brings every converted person to the Son. It's a mystery how it all works, but it's beautiful. Like Jesus said, there's no way Peter could identify him as the Messiah without the Father revealing it to him. And so Jesus says, you've given them to me. And he said, I have given them the words you gave me, Father. And the words that Jesus gave them were that God the Father is the only true God and Jesus is the, his Son whom he has sent. He goes on, they have received them and they know in truth that I came from you and now they believe that you sent me. This is the, the whole intention of the Father, of Jesus' coming and the Father giving to Jesus the apostles to communicate to them the truth about who God is and the truth that's revealed in Jesus himself. And Jesus says, Father, I've given it to them and they've received it. And then he says a variety of other things. But the key thing I want us to, to think about is he says, I've given them your word. He repeats it again. And he said, and the world has hated them because they're not of the world. Jesus said, I gave them the word. They've received it and internalized it. And now the world is doing the exact same thing to them as they did to me. Here's the destiny of disciples. The world is rejecting them because they've received from Jesus the truth that there is one God and there's one Father of us all and that Jesus is his Son and the Father sent the Son for the sake of the salvation of the world and that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way, there is no other truth ultimately for salvation and there is no other life than Jesus. And so because they, lit, they received it and they're actually beginning to live it, the world, the fallen dimension of this world that we live in, it's 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 both created by God and good, but there's a dimension of it that's fallen. Our politics, our entertainment, all kinds of dimensions within society, there's a resistance to God that's present, right? A kind of disordered energy that refuses to receive God and the things of God and make it very easy for us to resist God or to not pay attention to God. That's the fallen world, right? And so it's that world... And the rulers of that world, those who are living in the world and really giving themselves to it, that are going to come against the apostles because they're bearing a word of the kingdom and the rule of God. And Jesus says, they've received the word, Father, and it gave them joy. And then he was very clear, he said, Father, and now they're experiencing the hatred that I myself experienced from the world. And then Jesus prays for them. And he says to them, Father, I pray not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. We're living through an intense battle. I've talked about it in the past of a Psalm 2 crisis. Psalm 2 reminds us that constantly that the temptation of the world and the kings of the earth and the fallen world is to set themselves against the Lord and the rule of God and the kingdom of God and the commandments of God. We're living at a particular hour in history where that's now rising. As it's a, in a post-Christian culture where the kings of the earth are now demanding a different story, a different narrative. They said, let's throw off the commandments. Let's deny what we always understood was part of either uh, natural law, the commandments of God, the Ten Commandments, because we have a better way. And we're the masters of the universe. And we are our own masters. And we define our own truth and our own goodness. So we know that battle is going on. And what that means is, at the heart of it, as Psalm 2 says, the kings of the earth and the rulers are setting themselves against God, whether they know it explicitly 
or not. That's exactly what's going on. But they're plotting a vain thing. It's something that will ultimately not work. And their, their plotting will be against those who bear the kingdom, those who carry the word of the declaration and are living under the rule and reign of Jesus. So Jesus is not surprised. He's not surprised that it's happening now. And he wants you to take consolation and me to take consolation. When he sees our troubled hearts and we're afraid and so many things are shaking, he's right here with us. In fact, he's given us the Holy Spirit to dwell in us as in a temple. I'm with you always. And if you turn to me now, I will strengthen your heart. I will give you peace. I will even give you joy in the midst of this. And I'll teach you and I'll give you the power to walk through these kinds of trials not denying it, but bringing it to him. That is the struggles that we're experiencing internally because he wants to transform us. So walking with the apostles uh, over the next few weeks is going to be very instructive. So take advantage of it. Read John's gospel, 14 to 17, chapters 14 to 17, and just prayerfully read through it. Some of the other gospel stories we're here, we'll hear as well. And Jesus is so clear with the apostles. They're saying, tonight you're all going to scatter. And of course they said, no. And then Peter leaned into him uh, uh, among all the apostles and said, you know, I get it. They might scatter because I kind of know, but not me. I'm your man. And Jesus said, no, Peter, uh, tonight, uh, tonight you're going to deny me three times. And Peter even said, no, Lord, I'll die for you. So Peter and the apostles experienced the, the weakness of their own heart. As much as they loved the Lord, the power of sin and death and fear and Jesus called it, what, the hour of darkness, the devil's hour. He had dominion over them at some level still. And they weren't completely free. And so Jesus takes them through a process of having them, forcing them to see the battle that's going on inside them internally. And what faith alone, that is the faith of, that Jesus is saying, believe in me, trust in me, trust in my promises. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to strengthen you. And then just a, just a few pages down the Bible in the Acts of the Apostles, we see the apostles having stood up, Peter and John and other apostles, being brought before the religious leaders who are trying to intimidate them and tell them, stop speaking about Jesus. If you don't speak about Jesus, essentially we're going to cancel you. If you don't stop standing and publicly proclaiming these things, or if you, stop, if you don't stop resisting our plan and our program, it's going to cost you. Here's where we are. It's the same kind of thing that's emerging. The Lord's not surprised. The Father in the, sits in the heavens and laughs. He knows he's put his son on the throne, Psalm 2 tells us. And we need to be able to see the, the transformation that the apostles underwent. And where the second time they get brought before the, you know, the religious leaders, and they even got beaten at one point in chapter 5, it talks about, but they, they were already aware chapters 4 and 5, that what they were experiencing from the resistance of the religious leaders and the rulers of the time was an expression of Psalm 2. They, they said it right out. They read it. The kings of the earth are setting themselves against us. And what did they do? Instead of being intimidated by the kings of the earth or being troubled in heart, they rejoiced. They said, this is exactly what Jesus said was going to happen to us. And we know he's with us. And we know that Jesus has conquered it all. And so what did they do? They prayed for boldness. They prayed for more opportunity. And they rejoiced. This is where the Lord wants to take us. And the only way to get there is to internalize and really believe what he says and the pathway he gives and how he instructs the apostles to face these things in themselves and how to read the situation they're in. And then ultimately, like I said, to trust Jesus' promises about what he's done, who he is, what he's accomplished, and what, he's, what he wants us to be able to stand in. And we too, friends, will find that peace, we'll find the confidence, and we'll be able to face any and every circumstance. And I think the thing Jesus is really working to produce in us is a freedom that allows us to love and not fear people to not get caught in the rage, to not get caught into the, the resentment and the confusion and the angst in the moment, but by God's grace to be able to come into a heart that's peaceful 
and sees those who are even against us as those bearing God's image who are still in a battle against the enemy and they don't even know it, they're enslaved, and to have love go forth from us, even when we stand for what's true and just, that we don't find in any of them ultimately our enemy. We have eyes to see because we have a renewed mind. But only from that place of peace and confidence in Jesus, walking by faith, hope, and love, will we be able to be a light now in the midst of the darkness and the intensification of that darkness, which is still ahead of us uh, down the road. So let's trust the Lord. Let's make the most of the next week and seek that special grace in this holy week, and the Lord will change you. God bless you.